Whether it's on social media or in casual conversation, you've probably heard a lot of conflicting advice about sunscreen, but how much of it is true? In this video, I'll demystify the biggest internet myths on sunscreen, and I'll describe how sunscreen actually works, what are the concerns relating to cancer and vitamin D levels. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Finbar, a GP specializing in dermatology. Now, I love the outdoors and I recommend my patients to enjoy getting outside for all the health benefits of UV light, physical activity, socializing, and the mental health benefits. But recently, there's been a lot of controversy over the use of sunscreens. We're going to address that in today's video. There are two main reasons why you should consider using sunscreen. Firstly, to prevent signs of aging. This evidence is very strong on this one. Sunscreen, without doubt, reduces pigmented spots known as age spots or solar lentigo, and it reduces the lines and wrinkles due to loss of collagen. But here's the sting. You need to use it all year around to protect yourself from the signs of aging. Now, let me know in the comments below if you'd like a deep dive into the best practices for year-round sunscreen use to prevent signs of aging. But in this video, we're going to address the second reason why we should use sunscreen, and that's to protect ourselves from the sun damage, which can lead to pre-cancers and skin cancers like melanoma, BCC, and SCC. If your concern is in the prevention of skin cancer, then depending on your background medical history, the application of sunscreen may only be necessary when the UV index where you live reaches three or above. Now, the UV index is a measure of the strength of the damaging ultraviolet rays from the sun. In the UK, we recommend sunscreen use from April to the end of September. Thankfully, there are plenty of free and online UV trackers for you to look up so that you can check what the UV index is at particular times of the day or the year where you live. I even noticed it recently on the weather app on my iPhone. Sunscreen plays a crucial role in UV protection, which is essential for preventing skin cancers, as highlighted in this recent paper. So why the controversy around sunscreen and cancer? Well, in recent years, a concerning trend has emerged on social media platforms, the anti-sunscreen movement. Influencers and celebrities are using their platforms to spread misinformation, claiming that chemical sunscreens contain harmful ingredients that can cause cancer because it contains chemicals absorbed into the bloodstream that are linked to cancer. Some influencers go even further, arguing that sunscreen is more dangerous than actual sun exposure. This is not only misleading, but also dangerous. Some will also say that increasing use of sunscreen in recent years has mirrored rising rates of skin cancer, including melanoma. But that's like saying umbrellas are causing the rain. They totally dismiss the changing behaviors of the population, like sunbed use, foreign travel, and our aging population. And also there's been improvements in skin cancer detection and recording. Anyway, the concerns regarding sunscreens are mainly around chemical sunscreens. There's actually two types of sunscreens. Firstly, chemical sunscreens, and they work by absorbing UV rays from the sun and making them harmless. These sunscreens are easy to rub in and dry invisibly. Then there are mineral sunscreens, which create a physical barrier in your skin. These lotions are typically thicker and can leave a white residue behind. Now, it's commonly explained online that chemical sunscreens absorb the UV rays and mineral sunscreens cause them to be reflected off. But in truth, both types mainly work by absorbing the UV rays and converting them to heat and energy. And this dissipates the potential DNA damage that UV rays can cause. Here are some basic facts. Sunscreen helps prevent against skin cancers. Skin cancer is the most common type of cancer around the world, and it's also one of the most preventable. The most dangerous type of skin cancer is melanoma, and most cases are caused by exposure to UV radiation. So no surprise here that the sun is the most common source of UV radiation. Sunburns seem to be the biggest risk factor, as having five or more blistering sunburns between the ages of 15 and 20 increases your risk of melanoma by 80%. Other types of skin cancer include BCCs and SCCs and are more common as we age and are due to cumulative exposure to UV light over many years. Now, there are two types of UV rays, A and B. UVA rays are considered 
aging rays. And while they don't necessarily cause burns, they break through the clouds and get through the windows and are responsible for things like wrinkles, leathery texture and dark patches known as solar lentigos. They're associated with an increased risk of uh, skin cancer, but not as much as UVB rays and UVB rays causing sunburns. When advising on UV protection, I advise my patients that sunscreen is only a part of it. I tell them appropriate clothing should be the first line of defense. Now, I like to wear uh, clothes in the summer which are specifically designed with a high UV protection. It's important to take other precautions like going into the shade and avoiding being being out in the direct sunlight in the peak UV hours, like in the afternoon time, if possible. I often get asked about vitamin D levels and sunscreen use. It's true that sunlight is a major source of vitamin D, which is a vital nutrient important for optimal bone health and hormone function, among many other bodily functions. But you can get most of what you need from just 15 minutes of sunlight three or four times a week. And it doesn't have to be in the same body part each time. Any part of your skin will make it. Too much sunlight can actually reduce your vitamin D levels. The British Association of Dermatologists states that long exposures to UV light can have a negative impact on vitamin D production and even cause vitamin D in the skin to break down, so it should be avoided. In addition, studies show that sunscreens doesn't seem to affect vitamin D production in most people. You can also get vitamin D from dietary sources like salmon and egg. And even if you were concerned, you could take a low dose of vitamin D over the winter months. Just be careful taking advice from some online health influencers who recommend taking high levels of vitamin D. You can actually get too much and this can cause side effects such as nausea, vomiting, muscle weakness, confusion, pain, loss of appetite, dehydration, excessive urination, many other things, including kidney stones. So just be careful on your vitamin D dose. I hope you're finding this information useful. If so, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. So let's get back to the title of this video. Do sunscreens cause cancer? Well, it is true that trace amounts of some of the chemical ingredients in sunscreens have been found in the bloodstream after sunscreen application onto the skin. However, the concerns relating to cancer are based on single cell and mice studies where large quantities of the ingredient in chemical sunscreens, oxybenzone, were given to the mice. And yes, it was linked to hormone disruption and altered kidney function. But for a human to get the dose of the chemical given to the mice, they would need to put sunscreen on every body part every single day for 30 years. So while the studies on mice have shown some potential risks at very high doses, the levels absorbed by humans through normal sunscreen use are so low that the current research shows that there is no evidence of harm. Only a small, minute amount is absorbed through the skin. And that's why the American Academy of Dermatology advises that, that scientific evidence supports the benefits of sun protection, including using sunscreen to minimize short term and long term damage to the skin from the sun's rays. And so the science doesn't show that any sunscreen ingredients currently available are harmful to health. But if this doesn't reassure you, that's okay. Remember, these concerns relate to chemical sunscreens, but you don't actually need to use chemical sunscreens. You could opt for mineral sunscreen. Now, the main ingredients in mineral sunscreens are zinc and titanium oxide. And the FDA has reconfirmed that they are safe for general use and are free from the chemical controversy that we just discussed. They're also commonly recommended for young children and pregnant women. Protecting your skin from the sun is crucial to your health. However, even with the best care, sun damage can still occur. If you want to learn more about how to identify and treat solar or actinic keratosis, one of the most common types of sun damage, watch this next video. Enjoy the outdoors safely and see you in the next one.